So you want to charge more money for your design projects, but you feel no matter how much you improve or how many design trends you follow, you can't seem to increase your prices. Well, today I'd like to show you an example of how your mindset when you design and prototype can actually make a big difference to the overall value of your design and prototyping project and what they could potentially be worth to a client. Here is a simple social GIF app I created last week. And if you've seen my videos before, you've probably seen something similar. It's just a simple home screen. And if we zoom into the right top corner, you can see we have this dark light mode button. Creating both dark and light mode versions when you design is a great way to stand out as a designer and it shows you really thought about all the scenarios in the user experience flow. So if we click on that icon, the whole app interface switches from dark mode to light mode. And to take that even a step further, the icon itself is nicely micro animated from light to dark. What I'm going to show you now are some of the differences between an average prototyping transition versus high-end, premium, more outstanding looking product that will help you stand out more as a product designer. Before we begin, as always, you have to keep in mind that layers names has a great meaning. They have to be consistent across all frames in order for smart animating Figma to work. Let's begin with recreating the icon. First, I click on the shape tool and draw a rectangle of 24 by 24 pixels and this will be my background. I click again on the shape tool and this time I'll select the ellipse shape and draw Draw an ellipse of 14 by 14 pixels. A great tip to lock the width and the height of the shape is to hold shift while you're drag. Let's give it a white color, duplicate it one more time by hitting on command T, and this time make it smaller 2 by 2 and position it up here. Now I can hold option on my keyboard and drag a duplication of that small ellipse and position it in the opposite direction. And let's keep doing that all around the bigger ellipse. Cool, we created the light icon. So now I'll select all the layers and hit on Option Command K to create a component and let's name this icon. If you'd like to learn more about components, you can click on this video up here. Next step is to add a variant by clicking on this plus icon up here and let's create the moon dark icon. First, let's select the small ellipse shape and bring the layer opacity all the way down to 0%. Let's select the big ellipse and make it bigger 20 by 20 pixels. Click on Command D to duplicate it one more time and make the second one a bit smaller, 18 by 18 pixels. Our position is 7 pixels to the left and 1 pixels to the top of our background to create that moon shape between the two ellipses. I'll give it a black color so you can tell the difference between both shapes. Hold shift on the keyboard to select both shapes and up here on boolean group I'll select subtract selection. That will subtract the small ellipse from the big one to create this moon shape. As you can see here in the layers panel, Figma has put both shapes in a group. We can undo that if we like by clicking on shift command G to ungroup them. Great, so now we have a light and dark icons. Let's get rid of the background in each variant, give each one a name. So I'll change this from default to light and variant 2 I'll change to dark. I hold option and drag a light instant to our dark frame. Okay, so from a design point of view, let's make this icon stand out even more by adding a button shape around it. So just like last week's tutorial, I'm gonna leave a link down below. I'm gonna add auto layout to the icon, set the horizontal and vertical padding to 12 pixels and align it to the middle. I'll add a stroke to the auto layout frame, set it to one and a half pixels and I'll change the color from solid to linear. For the top color, I'll choose lighter blue color and for the bottom one, I'll use the color picker to match the same color we have in the frame background. Let's round the corners all the way to create an ellipse shape, make some color adjustments, and now the icon is blending much more nicely in the overall design. This is how it looked before, and this is how it looks after. Now it's time to create the light screen, and it's much easier than it seems. I'll select the main frame and click on Command D to duplicate it. I'll change the icon component from light to dark variant, the fill white color to darker blue, and transfer all the other layers in our frame from dark color to light color. So again, I'm going to use the color picker to match the bottom color to the frame background and I'll set the upper color to more of the white range. Cool, I'm all done. Now it's time to prototype. Let's go to the prototype tab, select the light icon in the first frame and drag the plus icon to the second frame. In the interaction details, I'll leave it on tab, change the animation to smart animate, ease in and out back to 400 milliseconds. And again, the other way around, let's select the dark icon, drag the plus icon to the first frame, and we can leave the same properties in the interaction window. Let's see how it works. I'll click on the background, and under device, I'll choose iPhone 13 mini. Select my main frame, add a flow 
starting point and hit on the play button. Now look, if we click on the icon, we can transfer from dark to light. And I guess it's fine, but we like to take it to the next level. So what we can add is a rotation animation to the icon to make the micro interaction much more pleasing. Let's go back to the design tab, select only the light icon inside the auto layout frame and rotate it to minus 90 degrees. For the dark icon, I'll only add one degree in the rotation. And now if we preview it again, we can see this cool rotation animation in the icon and the transition from dark to light mode. Now, as you can hopefully see, it isn't necessarily difficult, nor does it take a lot of technical skills to create a design and prototype that looks and behaves a lot better. I mean, just look at the difference one more time. It's not even close. The new version of the prototype just look much more smooth and premium. Your design and prototype can stand out a lot more like that and it only take a couple more minutes to do. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Follow my design work on Instagram at gaubi.design and I'll see you in the next video.